Hey everybody, um, it is good to get to share with you. We are in our Christmas series, always love our Christmas series every year. And I'm David Griffin here alongside Jeremy Fisher. I sound like an announcer there for a minute, I'm okay didn't I? I'm with that, yeah. I'm all right with that. Come and, on uh, down. Yeah, <laughs> and so uh, uh, we're here to discuss our Christmas series, which is based out of uh, Isaiah chapter nine. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the context of it, which is really important uh, for this particular series for us to kind of understand when this Christmas prophecy was made. You're probably familiar with it. It says, uh, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And so we talked about Wonderful Counselor last week. This week we're talking about Mighty God. And uh, last week we talked about Wonderful Counselor being incredibly relevant because Ahaz had a lot of counselors, they just weren't good ones. Right. And this coming Messiah was going to be the Wonderful Counselor, the amazing, miraculous Counselor yes. that no one would be able to parallel. Yeah. But today we're talking about Mighty God, and I'll give a little bit of background for everybody, then we can kind of discuss yeah. kind of the practical implications and give you some places to stop uh, and look at, uh, you know, and discuss with your group about some of these things. So, um, as you re remember from the message, um, Ahaz has made an unholy alliance um, with an enemy, or what would have been an enemy in Assyria, in order to kind of deal with the uh, threat from Syria and uh, the northern tribe, which has aligned themselves with, with Syria. And, uh, and Assyria ends up being the undoing of uh, Judah, or the southern kingdom. Um, and, and actually, you know, brings this, this devastating defeat um, to Ahaz. So, um, they are trusting in Assyria when they should be trusting in mighty God, right. not mighty Assyria. Yeah. In your experience, Jeremy, where have you seen someone trust something that actually may have become their undoing? Yeah, isn't this, isn't this funny that this is 2,700 years old, and yet this is a tale as old as time, right. uh, where it seems like there should be uh, you know, a, an obvious answer to trust God in your life in whatever circumstance you fill in the blank, financial hardship, right. relational error, whatever. And yet there are these kind of easy escapes along the way. And like I said, you can kind of fill in the blank. It's easier to run to um, pornography when it's difficult in your marriage to work through some of those right. relational things there. Because yeah, it's easy, it's easy intimacy, false intimacy, but easy intimacy. False intimacy, but easy intimacy, exactly, yeah. Um, it's easier to run to a credit card when it's like, man, I should be buckling down in these financial areas of my life, but yeah. man, I, I can just run to this thing so easily, this solution, so yeah. to speak. Or even, or even just the uncertainty that wealth does. It, it doesn't even necessarily have to be the, the dysfunctional nature of debt. It could be just even money. If I accumulate more money, that becomes my ally. And so I'm holding on to that. I'm not investing in the kingdom or anything else. I'm just holding on to money. So there's another one. Right. You can fill in the blank on this sort of thing. I mean, whatever, whatever your, your, your vice is. Addiction. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, I'm sinking. I'm in an area of my life where it feels like I'm hopeless and I need something to lift me up. Well, the obvious answer in church, we'd say, you should be running to the Lord with this sort of thing. But sometimes when it doesn't feel very tangible, it's so easy to run to a bottle. It's so easy to run to pills. It's so easy to run to right. a person, whatever. You can fill in the blank, but I think we all know this. It is not unique to Ahaz in this situation here but it's something that we all right. deal with in our life. Yeah, and that would be really a, a good discussion point for groups is yeah. to take, is to you know hit the pause button right here and to discuss what are some of the things um, maybe you're tempted with uh, today to partner with or things maybe in the past that you now have somehow or another overcome um, or, or maybe you didn't overcome it. Maybe it, it got the best of you and eventually you hit rock bottom. Yeah. You know, I think this is a good time to share some of those things because, because I think we, we all tend to believe that there's something out there that's going to be mighty enough right. to overcome whatever it is that we're struggling with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so do you, do, you feel like, do you feel like there's anything... Um, why, how does, this, how does the, our doctrine of who God is and our theology about who God is, why does that matter um, based upon that temptation? Yeah, you know, theology is one of those words I feel like when you hear it in church, you can 
turn off pretty right, quick. Yeah. Like, all right, I'm out. Just get me to the next. Yeah, give me the next Zeke story. Give me the next Zeke story. Give me the next, you know, <laughs> illustration or whatever. <laughs> but theology here is everything. Okay. When you view the magnitude of God and you know who he is, you know what he's capable of, you know how he cares for you, how he's invested it, how he's in control, mm -hmm. and how he's sovereign. Yeah. Your, the landscape here takes a totally different picture. Right. It's a completely different angle you're viewing things from now. And when you've got that kind of mindset and you can realize, okay, God is in control, God is able, God is interested, well, now you can start to lean into those sorts of things instead of running in your own power yeah. to these other cheap escapes. Yeah, so look at it, and he says, he says, you know, wonderful counselor, then he says, mighty God. And so when we understand the might of God, when we understand the omnipotence or all power of God, um, then we are not nearly as tempted to run to the mighty hydrocodone yes. or, yes. or the, the mighty uh, pornography right. and whatever, which actually oftentimes becomes the undoing. That's the, yeah. that's the that's craziest the crazy thing, right? Yes, is that it seems like it's such a solution and it's, it, it, it will eventually be the result of your downfall. Right. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it, almost, it, almost, never, it almost never works. And so, so theology is important for us to understand um, God's sovereignty and God's power. And then we're not saying mighty Assyria or mighty fill in the blank, like you said a little yeah. bit earlier. Yeah. We can just kind of, you know, keep walking through those things. Yeah. So when, when you look back over your life, mm -hmm. are there places where you wish you would have <laughs> run towards mighty God yes. and away from the very thing that you actually ended up running towards? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think back in the even when I knew I was going to become a pastor, mm. there's a large part of my 20s, particularly while I was in college, where, you know, all, all those sorts of things that you would consider a rite of passage, mm. you know, for people that get into college. I was living the party life. I was chasing girls, doing all sorts of stupid things. And I look back on it now and all I was doing was, if we're going to boil it all down, all I was doing was searching for something that would satisfy. That's right. it. And I think we all have been there at some point along the way. Everybody has touched on this in their life. It's part of the, the fabric of right. being a human, you know, figuring this sort of thing out here. Right. So it's not unique to me. You know, it's not unique to Ahaz. I think we've all kind of gone through this sort of thing. Yeah, and it's not unique to, to Bono, to use an old U2 yes. reference. Yes. I, still I still haven't, haven't found, found what, what I'm looking, looking for. for. And I think everybody yeah. is, is, is struggling with that. I think you go through the Bible and you see story after story after story of, you know, people coming to Jesus, honestly, as what appears to be one of many potential solutions. Yes, yes. Whether and, it's a woman at the well, right? She's sitting there and she's... Right. She's thirsty. Well, she's thirsty, right? <laughs> I mean, she's, she's looking for some kind of satisfaction. Sure. I'm not sure it's the water uh, there, but she's searching, right? Uh -huh. You know, you can, you, again, there's so many characters you just find the it, scriptures. Yeah, you find it over and over and over again, and that we're, that we're constantly, you know, coming to various things, thinking that they're going to provide a solution, when in reality, the only solution is the mighty God. Yeah. And so yeah. what's interesting is they get to that place, and they finally, you know, even the rich young ruler, we, we, we find they finally get to that particular place and they have a decision to make. Will they just move on to the next thing, hoping that it will get better? Or will they bear down and recognize the value? And let me get it to Christmas, the value of the gift, the gift. that's actually in front of them. Yeah. We ignore gifts that we don't see as valuable. Yeah. But if God in his sovereignty, you know, we say a lot of times around here, you know, come to Jesus if you can. Uh, if, if God in his sovereignty is drawing upon your heart and you can see Jesus for the solution that he is, it can change everything, can it? Yeah. Absolutely. Did it for you? Oh my gosh. My life will never be the same. I, you know, I never would have thought growing up some of the stuff that I was involved in, I never would have thought along the way that I would be sitting here today. But one encounter with Jesus changed everything. Yeah. So another thing that would be good is to share um, those encounters yeah. um, with Jesus. I think it would be really um, you know, powerful for, for you guys to maybe share those stories. One of the things that was meaningful in our group uh, was to walk through testimonies over the course of several, it actually took us about five months uh, for every, all, all 14 people in our group to give their testimony. Yeah. And it was really powerful to hear. And there's always kind of this moment where someone has to decide, am I gonna continue chasing this or am I gonna rest easy in the arms of the wonderful counselor, mighty God, yeah. everlasting father, prince of peace. He came as a baby yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, I said it last week, and again this week, that lots of babies have become king, but only one king has ever become a baby. Yeah, that's good. 
And, and I think that that's you know, important to know that the greatest gift that God ever sent um, was Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and I hope that you guys are able to experience that and discuss that in community. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy, thanks for being with me. Man, it was good. Good, good stuff. Hey, thank you guys. Y'all have a fantastic group. We're praying for you, and we look forward to connecting with you next week as well. God bless you guys.